This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero safely on your iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source and you always control your own keys and seed. And by XMR.to. Anonymously exchange your Monero into Bitcoin and seamlessly send Monero to any Bitcoin address. Go to XMR.to or use it right in your Cake Wallet. Cake Wallet and XMR.to are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Ayla, an OnlyFans pornography star and early cryptocurrency enthusiast and believer who has recently been mentioning Monero on Twitter. Douglas and Ayla discuss her journey into the crypto space, her opinion of Monero, and her thoughts on where she sees crypto going. Monero Talk starts now. All right. Ayla, thanks for coming on Monero Talk. Thanks for having me on the show. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you're, I guess you're not our typical guest. Usually we have people that are, um, you know, very, uh, very involved in the Monero space. Uh, we have a lot of developers on, uh, people like that. But I believe you are a Monero user. I actually I, discovered you recently on an unheard episode, which oh. uh, was very cool. I thought you did a great job. Uh, I thought the interviewer did a great job as well. It was a great discussion. And during that interview, you mentioned that you were into crypto. I guess we should talk about first what it is, what your day job currently is and what it has been. But you had also mentioned crypto. And then I went and did some searching, did some Googling. I found you on Twitter. Uh, you're, you're definitely a, a deep pond. There's, there's, a, there's, a lot, there's a lot there. And uh, I'm most interested in the crypto aspects. But why don't you first tell us what kind of what your what your day job is and what you're most known for on the internet? Yeah, uh, porn. Basically, I do OnlyFans. I post photos of myself in various states of undress, and then I, I write about it and other things. So that's that's mostly like why people know about me. How long have you been doing that for? Eight years. Uh, various forms of sex work, but OnlyFans since April. But all of it eight years. Okay. How old, if you don't mind, how old are you? I'm 28. 28. Okay. Uh, have you had a career, like done any work before that? Anything outside of that industry? Well, I, I worked at a factory on an assembly line floor for about a year before I got into sex work. I do not recommend it. One out of 10. And I did, I worked on a team for a crypto ICO back in 2017. Uh, so a brief break from, from sex work was that. Okay, so you went from that, you went into crypto. What did what was the it was a startup? It was what was it? Yeah, I had um a friend decided to try and do an ICO and was like, hey, I'll pay you some money if you come help. Uh, because I was like really getting into data analysis at the time. And so I was like, okay, yeah, I was getting burned out with camming, so I decided to just give it a shot because it was something else. Uh so yeah, <laughs> I didn't know a lot, in, but I got into it. That was in 2017? Uh, that was the end of 2016 is when it all started. Okay. That and was like during like, yeah, the ICO craze. Yeah. What, you, what was the project? What was it about? I'm kind of embarrassed to talk about <laughs> it. Um, I think it could have been really good. It, it was a, a dating app, basically a crypto dating app. Okay. So the idea was to have um, uh, basically like weighted interactions that sort of like were organically calculated to like reduce or encourage um, messages throughout the dating market that would make it even handed using a token. Gotcha. Yeah. So I've, I've heard that idea discussed quite a bit. I don't think it, there's ever been really a successful version of it yet. Right. Um, how, how much success did it have? Did they ever develop a product at all or it was just a token thing that never really turned into a product? Well, we did a modest ICO and uh, at the, I think the peak of crypto, like February 2nd or something, it was something around there, January, um, at the very peak. So it immediately crashed a lot, which meant a lot of the raise was lost. Uh, so never ended up actually making a successful problem with product, although we tried for about a year after that. Okay. There's, there's obviously a lot of those stories. Now, did you, when you went into that, did you, had you had already heard about crypto or was that kind of your first 
around no, the No, I was, I loved crypto. So I haven't actually like been into it as in like coded it or whatever, but I bought my my I bought a bunch of Bitcoin when it was $20 um back okay. in the day cuz I, I heard about it and I loved the idea. I like I'm like pretty libertarian -y and like the thought of having a, a currency that's sort of independent of regulation and private was just like a wet dream for me. So I bought in despite everybody telling me I was insane. Um, also bought a bunch of like Ethereum pretty early on as well. Uh, so I may not know like a lot of the technical side, but like the philosophy behind it, I'm like very into. Amazing. All right. That, that, this is, this is good. I like the direction this is all going in. Um, so that, that's impressive at $20 and you, you grasp the concept, like the, you know, the weight of what this all meant. Cause a lot of people, you know, they didn't really, you know, they heard of Bitcoin, but they didn't really understand. Like I was one of those people, like I, I heard of it. I saw the price early on, but I thought, nah, this this is just going to be one of those kind of uh, digital gold attempts that's centralized, that's going to fly by night. And I didn't really grasp the decentralized nature of it right away. Uh, what was kind of your process there? Or is that just something you picked up on right away? Yeah, it's, it's actually kind of hard for me to remember because it was so long ago. I had a friend who was very into Bitcoin at the time, who is now very wealthy. Um, but he was telling me like about it being decentralized. He would basically gave me like a very clearly e easy to understand explanation of like how it worked and why it was valuable. Um, and and I didn't have any high expectations for it to go up in price. I mostly just got in because I wanted to support the ideas behind it. So, all right, amazing. So you had you had somebody there that kind of walked you through it and gave you that brought you to that aha moment. It sounds like. Which is yeah, he bothered me for a while, and I was like, I'm not sure. But then, uh, then I decided to get, try it. Very cool. I ended up selling my, most of my Bitcoin at three hundred dollars, though. So. Did you? Okay. <laughs> now, are you so? Are you still? Did you get back into crypto? Have you? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you don't. You don't. You don't have to tell me what you bought or anything. But are have you like uh, since then still been involved and in, in, you know, uh, I guess investing or buying or yeah. On and off through the years, um, depending on what my financial situation is like at the time, you know, in and out. Uh, I sometimes I buy a lot if I'm doing well, and then I'll I, I use crypto as a currency because as a sex worker, I actually ended up spending almost all of the crypto I had been accumulating um, last year doing sex work. So and now and then I got started buying back in again this year. Okay. Um, while using, so are, do you primarily, is it Bitcoin that's being used or how is it being used? Cause on OnlyFans and, you know, so part of my research was I went and checked out OnlyFans. Um, and actually, so I was surprised it was actually, wasn't that easy to get started. Um, you have, you have to basically, obviously you have to create an account. Um, but like I saw you, you, you had like a free version account and then a paid for, and then even the free version, it required a credit card just to use to, to essentially sign up to OnlyFans. It seems like you need to use use a credit card even just to use the free aspects of OnlyFans. Is that is that correct? That's correct. So I was kind of, I was kind of surprised by that. I guess I see why they're doing that, but I would think that that creates a lot of friction and kind of uh, there's a lot of people that would go on and lurk more if they didn't require. The credit cards and it, in my mind it makes me think oh this would kind of be a good use case for something like crypto particularly monero uh so rather than asking for a credit card allowing people to use monero in particular to kind of get through those gateways in a you know in a way where you're not giving up too much user yeah. data I think part of the reason for the credit card, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I was under the impression it doubles as a verification of age. Uh, because oh, okay. I don't think you can get a credit card if you're under 18. Okay. Um, so so that, this is one like, way of like either. complying with like staying above board. Like they can't get in legal trouble for having underage people on the platform. Okay. Interesting. I mean, obviously there's other... Monero would have nothing. Uh, there's no way to do that with Monero. Right, 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 right. Uh, I mean, obviously there's other, you know, there's other websites you can go to where there's, you know, uh, you know, adult content, but I guess they just ask you, are you over the age of 18? But I, OnlyFans maybe doesn't want to take that risk because of the, the money that's involved there, I guess, because yeah. of the success that they're having. Maybe. I mean, there's been recent moves, you know, with the whole Pornhub thing when the Visa MasterCard fiasco. 
Um, so I think I think this is gonna have a chilling effect on the rest of the free to view porn economy. Yeah. So what do you? So then, how does crypto come into your to your life here with with uh, the work you're doing? So on OnlyFans, people aren't using crypto. It's when they're communicating with you outside of OnlyFans and they're paying for you for things directly. Yeah, so it's not actually through OnlyFans. I was an in-person full-service sex worker um, before I started OnlyFans and I switched over because of the coronavirus. Um, and so with that, a lot of the ads that you buy are through crypto. Um, so when I was buying like advertisements on various like escort websites, that's that's what happened. Oh wait, so explain that a little bit more. I don't know that whole world. So when you're advertising as somebody that is an escort to sign up and get that ad, you were using crypto to purchase the ad. Right. And that's the preferred payment that they accept? Do they accept other forms of payment? Um, so it depends on the website. Some of them do accept debit credit cards, but um, crypto is a very common one too. Okay. And yeah, so I would use my crypto for that. Because I like using crypto whenever I can, you know, it okay. feels to, to use it yeah 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 so do, do you do you use bitcoin you use monero or you're just using whatever you have is there is there a reason for what you're using when you're using it what's uh what's going on there <laughs> so if I, it's been a while but I, if i remember correctly i think i use monero i've used monero to accept payment for escort escorting before okay um for people because like not a lot of people have Monero, so it's like it's like rare to find somebody. Um, I've used it for purchasing of psychedelics before, because okay. um, it makes me feel safer. Uh, but with the ads on escort websites, typically it's Bitcoin or Ethereum. Okay. Do you find so? And people have paid you, so you used it for the advertising things, and you used it for uh, other purchases you made. Have people used it to buy things from you, to buy like videos and things from you directly and services and things like that? Um, like if it, there, somebody used Monero at some point, did, did people use Bitcoin for it? Because I guess what I'm trying to get at is I feel like a lot of people were using uh, Bitcoin thinking it was anonymous. It sounds like you were kind of a early user. Um, was that the case? Did people use Bitcoin and they were like, oh, I want to use Bitcoin because it's, you know, the anonymous way to transact? The only person who paid me for in-person sex work with Monero was with Monero. Nobody okay. did it with Bitcoin. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so, so do you see there, do you have any ideas on where you, because you worked on that startup, uh, obviously, uh, you know, you're, you were one of the top or you are one of the top uh, performers on OnlyFans, right? Like you're like one of the, the top highest percentage yielding, yeah, right? So you know that world very well. Do you see there, do you have any ideas on how crypto will get integrated into that? Do you have thoughts there? I don't know. So uh, a lot of girls have a lot of hesitance around crypto because they're very used to being scammed a lot of the time. And so when somebody comes to them and is like, hey, I would like to pay you in crypto, they, they process it as a scam because they don't really know a lot about it. Um, so I, I try and you know vouch for it whenever I can. Uh, I, I don't know. I think it needs more widespread acceptance. I'm probably not like in the expert chair to be able to talk about this. I'm sure you know a lot of people who feel more familiar with it. But I still am a huge proponent of crypto and porn. I think it's an incredible use case. Um, and I'm like, I'm just keep like <laughs> shouting it whenever people are angry at the payment process. I'm like, crypto, you can just use crypto, you know? So we'll get there. I, I think that's becoming much more easy to use. Like back when I used it, you had to like freaking download a wallet. But now that you have apps on your phone, it's incredible. Yeah, it's getting a lot easier for sure. Especially with Monero, Monero is very difficult for a long time. Uh, it didn't, it, you know, it didn't have a phone app for a while. Uh, now it does, so it's it's pretty much as easy to use as Bitcoin. Yeah, I just learned that the other night. I, this whole time, I was thinking I have to go and freaking download the whole thing on my computer again. Take like a week. Yeah, no, it's a lot easier now. Um, where do you do you have so do you have any thoughts on where you see everything going in, in crypto? Do you think about that? Do you like do you think you know we're all going to be using cryptocurrency in X amount of years? I mean, you you seem to to um, you know be a, a technologist. You have you know from what I what I'm I'm looking at when I see on Twitter, you you seem to have a lot of insights. Uh, what what do you see the future being, the near future, the far future in terms of crypto? I don't know. I 
I, again, I'm not in an expert chair at all. And I feel like very unconfident, like my confidence level is quite low. Yeah, if you don't have any thoughts (laughs) there, no worries. worries. Um, But if I had to make a guess, um, I mean, it seems good that like uh, bigger institutions are investing in crypto. That seems like a good sign for like those people. I assume they have much smarter people advising them. So they probably have like a better... uh, Computers goofing off, um, so that's a, that's a good sign that like updates my my estimate that it will be used a lot. Um, I'm I'm unclear about how like, governments will interact with it. I feel like like that's sort of like the big hazy gray area. I feel like if there was no government regulation at all, if this was not a worry, I would put like pretty high chance on crypto becoming like a dominant. Uh, uh, financial use, uh, money use in like, I don't know, five, 10 years, but. Okay. Now you, you said you're a libertarian, right? So that's, that's kind of the main reason why you got into crypto. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what is your understanding of Bitcoin versus something like Monero? Like how, how, what is your, uh, how do you, how do you look at those two? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Bitcoin's not my favorite. I'm personally pretty into Ethereum more than Bitcoin. Um, okay. And of course, Monero. I, I just, I like the philosophy behind it. But uh, Bitcoin seems to be the most viewed. People seem to be using it the most and investing in the most. And I don't quite understand why that is the case. I don't have good thoughts on this. Okay. No worries. Um, so it, obviously, you know, Bitcoin has the network effect. Ethereum as is is well known as well. Um, but as I'm sure you're aware, like Bitcoin is is transparent, right? It, so it's it's every mm-hmm. transaction is stored and saved on a transparent ledger that effectively the whole world can see. And once you know your your real world identity is tied to an address on the Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, essentially all your transactions can be tracked and traced. Do you have, as a libertarian, as somebody who works in an industry where uh, I assume uh, people uh, want privacy, uh, especially the the customers, do you have opinions there as to whether or not that's a flaw in Bitcoin? Um, So correct me if I'm wrong. It's been a while. Can't you tumble, tumble it? Well, yeah, there's people, there's, there's, People, you, there's workarounds, um, but they're not, you know, they're not very effective. Yeah, uh, they yeah. can be untangled essentially with enough computing power and enough analysis. Uh, the other concern it, concern is uh, because the tumblers essentially are separate products and they're not built into the core technology, that those things are essentially looked at as being illegal, right? So uh, you have Bitcoin and then when you go through the act of tumbling it, you're essentially uh, could be seen as, you know, uh, you know, doing something illegal, uh, right? Because now you're you're essentially trying to wash your funds as opposed to it being built into the technology by default. Right. So now it's not that you're washing your money, you're just using it as everybody else is using it. And it just happens to not have that transparent nature. Yeah, I, I, it does seem true that Bitcoin is like, uh, pretty transparent. In my opinion, if it's consensual, it's fine if all parties are consenting to it. And if somebody understands the uh, like the privacy risks inherent in Bitcoin and decides to knowingly do that, um, Bitcoin is still in some degrees like pri- more private than like an institution in the sense that it feels like more separate sort of from like government overreach at this point, which may change in the future. According to my understanding, I could be which wrong. Is- well, this, this is good. This is good because you ha- you have a lot of follow. How many followers do you have on Twitter? You have a you have, a, you have yeah you have a lot of followers and you know Monero talk show. I mean, I, I'm a broken record on this show, but it's you know I'm basically talking to the same same group of people all the time. I mean, we we grow a little bit, but you know we're in our bubble here, you know, and mm-hmm. it's important that we start to get that information out uh, because you know I, I I do think it is a real problem. Uh, a lot of people are using Bitcoin uh, and they think that they're, you know, that it's fulfilling this libertarian dream when it has the potential of fulfilling, uh, you know, a dystopian version of that dream, wherein everybody ports over to this new protocol 
thinking that you know it's it's money that's not controlled by the state uh and you know it it is in a lot of ways but what they're not realizing is they're porting over to a system that's 100 transparent that mm -hmm. any government anywhere can track and trace uh and it's essentially easier to track and trace than something like for example cash right so currently people right. You know, you could go to the bank, you could take out a thousand dollars, you could take out a few thousand dollars and you could go use that in the real world. And for the most part, you could do whatever you want with it. You know, uh, with the big, with Bitcoin, question, but like, uh, I was going to say, um, I mean, is this the difference between like uh, transparency versus control? Like with Bitcoin, you get great, much greater transparency and thus like a greater government insight. But the government does not have the ability to freeze your funds. So it's sort of like kind of a trade off. And this might make more sense, for example, if you're in a position where the government does not have the ability to like, uh, do certain things. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I could just see this as sort of a, like a this kind of thing. I do agree that it's not ideal. Yeah, I mean, there is, there is that trade-off. And that's because of the technology. Uh, essentially, that trade-off comes with the technology. It's kind of hard to have you know, all things. Uh, but my concern that I always voice on the show is that a lot of people, you know, see it as this uh, ultimate solution and, you know, they're out there uh, trying to move people over to it without realizing what it could lead to if we all do port over to it, what we're actually giving up. Um, and it's very easy, I think, to feel like you're owning something that isn't controlled by, by the state. Uh, and that is censorship resistant, but actually may be more, uh, you know, e easily controlled than anything we've ever had. That that's that's the concern that I have that I'm always voicing on this show and why I'm always that's trying to point. get people to to realize the importance of that and realize that there are there are other projects like Monero that are focused on solving that problem. Yeah, I think maybe I haven't uh, like fully appreciated the extent to which Bitcoin is being sold as uh, more than it is. Because um, mm -hmm. in my mind, if I want to buy drugs, I'm going to use Monero. Like if I want to accept payment for you know something illicit, I'm going to use Monero. Like for in my mind, Bitcoin has never really been that thing for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think maybe I've been underappreciating the amount to which it is for other people. Yeah, I think you know you you obviously understand it better than most, but. Uh... I would ask, you know, please, please try to, you know, let your fans know, let your followers know if you, you know, let, let people know about it. You know, it's important. You, um, you, have, you have a large following. Um, and yeah, like I said, I mean, you know, the people that, um, you know, like you that realize that it's great, but well, I'm, I'm concerned about those that, well, I think a lot of people purposely ignore it, right? Because they're, they're, they're watching the value of it go up. Uh, yeah. So they're just more concerned about that, which makes it even kind of more dangerous, right? So it, it's pulling everybody into this. And some people are just uh, looking at the number. They're saying, well, whatever, the number's going up. But then what are we going to arrive at? We're going to arrive at this this world where we're all on this completely transparent. Well, it's really this dangerous. Like, I don't, I don't necessarily see that this is like being worse than what we currently have. It feels like kind of a change for like, there's this, an extent to which actual value is always going to be present, right? Like mm -hmm. the inflation numbers of people speculating on it, those people are never going to be like really needing to use an anonymous cryptocurrency. Like to them, it's never going to hurt. And like, I think there's always going to be like a need for something like Monero, regardless of what the fuck ever happens with Bitcoin. So like, why are you afraid of Bitcoin specifically? Well, the, the concern is the same concerns with everybody, you know, using Facebook, uh, you know, everybody using oh, okay. Google, these mass surveillance concerns. And so not only now are you being surveilled in a way where, you know, uh, people know what movies you what Netflix movies you like, uh, but now they know every single purchase you've ever made. And there's really no greater way of knowing a person than knowing how they where they put their money. So imagine a world where the powers that be know how everyone spends every cent of what they own. And that's why I see it as a very concerning potential dystopia that we're 
on the brink of. And we were on that brink anyway, because if it wasn't going to be Bitcoin, it was going to be U.S. dollar coin, right? Uh, I mean, we're obviously moving in that direction where we're all going digital. And as things go digital, they tend to be uh, governments tend to be able to control things on a greater level with everybody yeah. walking around with these computers in their pockets and being tracked and traced all day long. So what the, the grand invention of crypto was, yes, even, even though we're moving in this digital world, there's still this saving grace uh, we could use encryption. Uh, and that's what the cypherpunks did and the crypto anarchists is they invented these, these tools, these open source tools that can be used to thwart uh, these powers that be the state and these large corporations that want to essentially, you know, surveil and censor everyone. Uh, and then so Bitcoin was the, f the first successful blossoming of that. And it's a, it's a great thing, but it's it's lacking in, you know, one or two ways that just doesn't really take us there that may take us all the way back to a worse version and that that that's that's the concern of me is that you know that we're going to be mass surveilled that i mean that seems fair i i think like i don't like emotionally connect on in that argument despite emotionally connecting with a lot of things around this uh something something like i just anticipate what will be needed will win out and this might be a step back, but like I have faith that like things that actually contribute to a better functioning system will end up taking like precedence because people are going to figure that out pretty fast. And so like as if Bitcoin leads to this greater surveillance state, which is concretely negatively impacting people's lives, I sort of just anticipate there will be a movement to Monero. Like it's inevitable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, if you know what. And I think through things like this, right? As we get the word out and people learn about it, right? So I mean, it has to, it has to right, exist. Like, it has to exist to as an option. What's that? Right. Like I think this is a problem with a lot of the surveillance stuff. It's like, so what? Go like the government knows my Facebook. Nothing has ever actually happened to me. So it's like really disconnected. I mean, I'm, but, I'm like saying that the, the popular awareness of this is that it's like totally disconnected from impact. Right. And so like, why should I feel worried about this? Right. And so wait, but do you, do you see surveillance as a problem? Do you see, are you concerned about the Googles and the Facebooks of the world and the fact that they can, you know, uh, you know, mass surveil and essentially uh, censor and, uh, you know, uh, control the conversations, potentially, you know, control maybe even elections or, you know, it's, there's a lot of power there. Are, is that a concern that you have? Well, you just conflated a couple things. You said, sure. are you concerned about surveillance? And then you mentioned like control and influence of collect of elections and censoring. Uh, I think yeah, those are all tied different together. things. I, I agree that they are very closely correlated. And I, I agree that people who are very high surveillance, like will most likely have those things, but I don't think that this is like necessarily true. And I, I do not have an inherent problem with surveillance given that there's consent involved. I love data. This is sort of like a dream of mine to like know everything about the entire world so you can figure things out. I do agree it's very difficult to like or to dis disentangle that from control and surveillance. Hmm. Uh, no, sorry, control and like censorship. That's um, interesting. So but as so a my libertarian is with oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So my issue is with the amount that surveillance leads to control and censorship, not with the surveillance itself. Hmm. But doesn't it always tend towards that? So like like Facebook, right, is a, is a behemoth of a company. Google is a behemoth of a, and, and all that money is coming from the fact that they're collecting data on everyone. Right. Yeah. And the concern is, uh, you know, once a person or a company uh, has all that power, they have a tendency to abuse and misuse it. That that's that's a concern. So, all right, so is that a concern? Do you agree with that concern, or you're saying you just trust in the fact that I guess other technologies will then come up and be there as alternatives to the to these concerning? I, I agree with the concern. I agree okay. that um, surveillance in the hands of people in the hands of a person, <laughs> like like to some extent, Bitcoin feels like less threatening because it is mass surveillance for literally it's like anybody can do this surveillance basically and so that's why it feels like a little bit less personal in the sense although i do agree that in the hands of somebody with power it's very bad and obviously like the government 
um, like has, has this ability to do so. I think the answer is like to reduce the power of government. I, I think that like surveillance is not in, like inherently, like if you manage to like decouple it, then that thing is fine. It's if the parties involved are consenting. And the parties do tend to consent, although without very good um, inform information about what they're consenting to on stuff like Facebook. But you're okay with like a Mark Zuckerberg, uh, you know, becoming, you know, a trillionaire eventually or whatever. Uh, and it's off of people's data and he's creating products that yes, people are consenting to, but that uh, it's almost getting to the point where they have no choice but to use it. Like a, a Google is probably a better example. Right? Google, like you need to use Google if you wanna if you wanna function in this world today, right? It's it's the way we can search the web. There's really not other alternatives that are really viable. Uh, so they they own that 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 part of the world. Uh, so yes, people are consenting into using Google. They technically don't have to, but they're also really theoretically, you know, they're on some level, they're being forced to use it and they're giving up all that information. And they're also uh, being controlled by this company on some level. You're, you're, whether, the whether the government has power or not, this company has is wielding uh, what I would say is an unfair amount of power. And I'm, I'm a big, big capitalist. I'm a laissez-faire capitalist. And uh, so I, I see the solution being, you know, technologies like cryptocurrency that come in and disrupt that. So let let the Googles be the Googles uh, as long as technology prevails in a positive way and we invent something that disrupts it, uh, which takes us back to Bitcoin. But then, you know, I see their <laughs> issues there. We need to make sure we pick the right one because my, my concern is that there's a window of adoption and time wherein if we don't choose the correct one, uh, you know, maybe it won't be fatalistic. Maybe th there will be another opportunity, but I think it will set us off in the wrong direction for quite some time. Because something like Monero, uh, if Bitcoin becomes the behemoth in the room and takes up all the oxygen and, you know, uh, the Monero doesn't fully blossom, um, it will lose its network effect and it won't have a chance to, to grow and survive. That, that's my concern. I, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know if I can like, <laughs> it feels like sort of like an intuitive thing. Like you have like sort of an intuitive sense about the way things go. And I have a little bit of a different one. Hmm. Maybe, I, maybe I don't even disagree with you. I, I just like have faith. <laughs> I just have faith that if Monero is needed, it will be used in the same way that like Bitcoin did like overcome like Fiat's network effect and like they got a stranglehold, be, or like not stranglehold, it got a hold um, because like it was needed. And so I think the same thing would happen with Monero if ever the point came to it. Although I do agree that it, it it is not useless to attempt to get Monero to have a stronger hold than it already does. Okay. Uh, I was I was following your Twitter a little bit today. Um, I was I saw you did a you did a long post series of posts. Uh, if you don't mind talking about it, I guess you were just concerned about, I guess, how you're being treated as a or your experience as a public, uh, a public figure or a popular figure on the Internet. Do you, do you want to talk about that? Is that can we get into <laughs> sure. that a little bit? We could try it out. Yeah, I'd just be interested to. to so what, what, what was the concern? What was the essence of, of that tweet storm? Uh, yeah, it's uh, so a lot of what I like to talk about is like sort of like finer points of like my reactions to things like psychology and like incentives. Um, and I noticed that I'm having unusual experiences in regards to like being a public figure and also an, a discomfort in talking about those things, which is like sort of the first time I felt like really uncomfortable talking about it um, because it, it feels very like unflattering in sort of a way, cause it's, no, it's very few people can relate to it. Um, so it's more scary to talk about it. And so that, that was basically the essence of it. That nobody can relate to what it is that you're going through. With <laughs> yeah. See, even in saying that, like, I feel like a little self-conscious because I'm like, oh, it's so hard. Nobody can relate to being a public figure. <laughs> it sounds stupid. No, it's, I, well, I can relate in a small way. So I, I feel you there. Uh, yeah? I, I ran for Congress this past season. Oh, really? Uh, I, yeah, I ran for U.S. Congress in New York, 
And so obviously, you know, my, I've already been out there on the internet with the Monero talk show, but I'm a, I'm a very private person. I'm kind of an introvert at heart. Uh, one of the reasons why I, you know, I love Monero philosophically, you know, I believe in, in privacy. Uh, I was never a big Facebook user uh, for all those reasons. But then I decided to run for Congress. And obviously, you know, that was kind of the opposite lifestyle, how to completely put myself out there. And for me, there was, um, you know, it was very, that was the hardest part, which was de- being out there as a public figure, uh, being attacked all the time, uh, especially, you know, somebody that's running for political office. So I could, t- I could totally feel you there. There's a, lot, a ton of stress that comes with it, especially if you're a person, you know, that it's, it's hard not to, you know, if you care, if you care about what people, you know, what people say, you know, and I think for the most part, everybody does. I think it's a, it's a, it's part of the human condition. Um, so I, I've heard, cause I went back, I was watching some of your other interviews. I heard you had mentioned that, uh, maybe it was an unheard one that your father, uh, he, he had a, what was his job? He was, uh, he was a, a, a minister or an evangelical ap- Christian apologist. Okay. So he was like a public, fi- he was out there, right? He was, a. Yeah. So is this is this similar to did he how did did you learn from that I guess is yeah I think are, so are you kind of following that same path in that respect yeah I kind of ironically I think like to some extent this like uh, attaches to some sort of deep insecurity I have like growing up my dad was cool because he was like famous and so I think that was sort of like like locked into my brain it's like oh if I want to become somebody that like my dad respects or you know, to be a good person in the world, like I need to be famous too. And then like, that will be like, finally I'll be okay. So like, I think that's a pretty subconscious thing. I don't think I like really consciously think like that, but that definitely is in there somewhere. Um, but I also experienced growing up, like everybody hating my dad and my family um, because he could, he obviously people hate, you know, evangelical Christian apologists and he was kind of a dick too. So uh, yeah, I I just grew up with it being normal that like our family was on the outskirts of society and that like people judged us, you know, because we thought such innocent things like gay people are going to hell. And so like, I don't know, I I kind of grew up comfortable with being um, attacked or like being hated online. Uh, So I think I'm in an unusually good position to be enduring this sort of thing. Um, but you're right. It's like, it's even so. It's like really um, unnerving and bizarre. Like I'm glad that you've experienced something similar about having like a wide amount of people suddenly take a lot of very intense interest in you. Um, it's it's a bizarre experience. Yeah, very stressful. So is this something that you are you going to continue to stick with it? Do you, do you have other thoughts? Are you, are you thinking about other career paths? What's- I'm, st- I'm sticking with it. This is what I got. I feel like a little bit. Um, like I don't have a lot of options, which might not be true, but like sort of it's just sort of the sense that I have about my life um, in the sense that like I didn't go to college. I don't have a lot of experience. I'm like, I've experienced as a sex worker, right? And as the internet loves to remind me over and over again, I have a uh, expiration date and you know, this doesn't lead to any other skills, um, which again, I don't think is fully true, but it feels internalized to some degree. So I feel like if I want to like make anything of my life, I have to use what I have already. And what I have is an unusual story um, and an unusual like set of circumstances. Well, you're obviously doing a great job. Uh, you know, you got, you got a lot of followers out there. You're, you're making good money on, on only fans, right? Is that, that's going very well, right? Yeah, it's going very well. Okay. Um, maybe they'll, hopefully they'll add crypto. They'll add Monero. Is so where, what's your, uh, what's your Twitter, Twitter handle? If you want to, let people know they could yeah, it's uh, any other Ailer, places that you, any Ailer. other things you want to let people know now's the time where, sh- where can people <laughs> find you and learn about you? I know you have a blog as well. Yeah. Um, my Twitter is a girl, a E L L a underscore girl. Um, if you do it without the underscore, you will get porn. So be aware of that. Um, my website is knowing less.com. Um, K N O W I N G less.com and then i'm just i'm kind of all over <laughs> i have a link tree like link tree uh slash ala girl and then it's it's not hard to find my stuff i'm cross-linked everywhere are you on reddit a lot yeah all right you should you, do you ever go by the monero reddit you should come swing by say hello i actually might be subscribed let me check 
I'm sure if you you know you did some posts there at all, and you, you would get, I'm sure you would get a lot of love over there. People. <laughs> what would I post? Oh, I'm not joined. I thought I was. I thought I was subscribed. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, swing swing on by the Monero Reddit. The crypto for, community uh, is pretty intimidating to me. What's that? The crypto community is pretty intimidating to me because there's I feel like it's there's so many dumb questions I'm afraid to ask because I don't want to look stupid. So it sort of like keeps me. No, please, especially especially in the Monero Reddit, where it, like it, they're all about answering. Uh, there is no dumb question, but they're all about answering. Well, uh, we'll see. Okay. All right. Well, it was great great having you on. I really appreciate it. I know you know this. I guess wasn't your kind of typical topic that you're that you're out there talking about. It wasn't, but it was really fun for a change of pace. I've been doing so many OnlyFans interviews, so this was awesome. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming on. We're gonna we're gonna post it soon. I'll, I'll send it to you. If you could spread it to your, to your fans, maybe you'll get some of them thinking more about crypto as well. Sure, I will All do. Right. All right, thanks so All much. Right, have a good one. Happy New okay. Year. Ciao. You too. Bye. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.